Afternoon, YouTubers. This is your friendly rear roading compadre, Mike. Reporting today, rear road update. Just a quick one. Um, I didn't realize uh, my pages were, the comments were shut off, so I couldn't get anybody, uh, I, I had a couple people email me and say, hey, you know, your comments are shut off and I can't leave you any messages and stuff, so. Um, so today, we got a lot of new things today. Uh, it was an interesting weekend, um, especially over here. We got this strange foreign engine here. Um, it was a good, it was a score. It was a Broadway. Um, my friend down the street had it. It was sitting in his shell for a while and I just, I got sick of looking at it. So I had to pull the trigger on it. It's just a really nice engine. And um, plus I have big plans for it anyways. Moving along to this. You now, what is this thing doing here? You know, this ain't Conrail. And I know you're thinking to yourself, I thought this was a Conrail layout. Well, it is. Um, it's just I have a lot of a lot of engines, and I just wanted to stop bringing some of my uh, other motive power over from my father's house and brought it to my house. And so this is what's been going on. Grabbed a B twenty three real quick. So, the features of today is over to here, to this guy. Say hello to my latest C&D car that I made uh, this past weekend. It was actually a couple hour build. Uh, it's still in the works, you can see. Um, but I weathered the wheels, weathered the trucks, weathered the undersides. I've been adding um, a little detail hint um, for all you people out there. Um, these were just regular Athern ready to roll gondolas and uh, I don't know. I, I don't like Atherns, but they're great for kit bashing. That's, a, that's about all an Atherns good for in my eyes. Um, I know a lot of people will disagree with me, but I just, I, I'm just not a fan. Anyhow, so if you look closely at the knuckle, you can see the air hose coming off. I've been taking, um, all you people out there with Kato's, Kato, Kato, whatever you want to call them, uh, they come with a lot of extra uh, air hoses and stuff. And um, I've been adding them to my rail cars. Uh, it's been actually a nice little detail, added detail, um, you know, or um, you know, just to jazz a car up a little bit. I mean, they're, they're pretty plain and boring. I mean, the only thing that's good about them is um, they got some really neat grab irons. You know, I like the grab irons on this car. Uh, we removed the brake wheel on the top, and like I said, it's just two, it's just two, two gondolas, cut and seamed, welded together, very carefully and strategically. Um, I do all my own. If you come on back over here to the CND yard, like this this guy here, that was an, Ath uh, an Atlas train man, uh, 52 foot gondolas, cut up. This was two Detroit, Toledo, and Iron Towns uh, cut up. And on to this one, which was another um, older Athern that I decided that needed to be cut up. Um, so all I got left to these cars is basically I got to do some fine detailing. Obviously, I got to put some uh, reflective striping and their road numbers on them. Um, like this brown one, they're new. Uh, the road, the road, the road name on it is TROX, which I'm, I'm assuming is in our area, it's Trojan Recycling. Um, the black ones are usually, uh, CDEX. Um, and then you get occasional AEWX and some randoms, but anyhow, back to the layout. So like I said, I've been working on these, these are, LL, these are pretty sweet. They don't take me too long to build. They come out really nice. Um, the ones I've been modeling that I see on around my area, they're, they're either gray, they're brown, or they're black. But moving along, and over to here. What is this surprise? Oh, wow. 
more Kato's. These are my two of my six SD80 Max in Conrail. Uh, we added sound, ditch lights, um, really nice engines. I love these two. These are like one of my favorites. Um, 4105 and 4103. If you're familiar with the Boston line towards the end of Conrail, you saw saw these all day long. Sometimes you'd see some B23s getting dragged behind, you know, coming out of switching duty, heading back to Selkirk. But anyhow, these are two of my prize prize girls. They came out of they came out of the uh, collection box today. So we're gonna do some. Uh, they're gonna come get some some work done to them. They're going to get cleaned up a little bit. Um, get cleaned up. Probably clean the wheels. And um, I started detailing it, but I got to finish them. So that being said, so over to the workbench. So this guy right here, 6811 SD50. What a score. I got this engine for 50 bucks. It's a Proto um, 2000. So it's the really nice Proto series. Uh, it's obviously no sound, no DCC. Um, all that was wrong with it, it's, it's got an engine whine to it. Um, so I'm gonna pull it apart, clean it up, clean up all the contacts, give it some grease and uh, rerun it. And then, um, I don't know. Probably add it just like all the rest, add it to the fleet. I, but I had to have it like a hole in the head. I mean, this thing was, this thing's brand new. I mean, it had all it had, all that was wrong with it. Like they said, was the motor made a little noise, and um, on the engineer side, the hit the front handrail is uh, got a little busted up. But I mean, for fifty bucks, I mean, it's a it's a beautiful engine for you know short money. So I had to have it. And uh, like I said, it's almost done. Just getting some bench work. Over to the wall of blue. Looking good. Finished detailing that Jeep, those two Jeeps up. Looking good. Just the way I like them, nice and dirty and rusty. Now we're gonna move over here to a little guy here. Um, this is Bay Colony 1706. I know you're seeing 45, 49 on it, but Walder's um, Jeep 9 mainline series uh i got a detail kit coming for it but if you uh if you're in the south shore or south coast um you you'll see this engine all over the place um he's everywhere uh so what i added to it was obviously a firecracker antenna a brass bell uh sunshades it's a funny engine it has an air horn in the rear a leslie in the rear so we had to have that and we added some um other details underneath and I'm gonna put install the bell and then it's going into the paint shop and it's gonna get all numbered up and painted up as Bay Colony 1706 and um, like I said it serves the Watapa branch with uh, Mass Coastal so that being said uh, and quick look at the layout it's looking good that crossing the, the, the jump, I call it my jumping track. The jump track is uh, that's that's Bay Colony's access to Conrail's main lines and sidings, so they can go and switch out some of their industries. And like I said, we're just been plugging away here. I gotta I gotta do a shout out this week uh, to my friend Andy the Andy and Sutton. He was he was he was saying on his layout he was doing these little water swales along the sides of his track so like i said in my last video i installed these pipes and uh underneath the tracks because down here um by the cape and everything we got um they got some of these running under the tracks so these are pretty uh pretty cool and uh, i just wanted to say th uh thanks andy for the uh for the good idea um and i took off and ran with it and like i said look it's coming out of here and this there coming out of the hill we got a lot of uh, a lot of new stuff. Um, I cleared out the white building that was that's right here, uh, making way because my beautiful Walder's order finally showed up. Um, I've got a bunch of new 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 things going in. Um, 
the tank loading rack for the gas tanker cars. Um, we got a fuel distribution center and a, some roof details because we can't have good enough roof without better detail. And uh, got to give another shout out to my buddy Josh Clancy at Clancy Welding who uh, fabbed up my my Alco, my 1940s Alco chair. That's the, that's the train chair. Uh, that came out of a 1940s Alco. And I got the brake wheel on the bottom for my base plate. And uh, that's the train chair. And uh, like I said, slowly but surely, we're gonna be, uh, as I come down here, you can see I'm gonna be adding on from here We'll be putting an L off of this side of uh, the yard here. Um, I got I got permission to expand my railroad, so no time like the present to go after it. And um, this is just a quick uh, quick look at what we got. And um, the best part about like this is you know getting creative. You can't get creative enough. I mean, it's just one of them hobbies you get so lost in in you know another another person i want to give a big thanks to is uh boomer dioramas up in canada I, i'm assuming he uh he really he's he's like me he likes putting model railroading into a uh real in-depth perspective you know it's all about capturing capturing that real that real life feel the the, the look and just just the, 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 the everyday dramatics of model railroading and real railroading. Um, it's, it's, it's just a wonderful, it's a wonderful hobby, and I can't, I can't say, you know, I can't say enough about how how much I enjoy model railroading. And and the more I've been railroading, um, the more I've been exploring and doing other things, like kit bashing buildings. Like this building got bashed up. This one got cut open in the front, you know, and um, moving along, like I built that building out of scraps. I mean, a lot of these things are just um, scraps. Like this mountain, this hill came off my old layout from when I was building my kids' layout. Um, I cut that off and put it added it to mine just to kind of kill some dead spot. Uh, that building right there was uh, supposed to be a, just a background building, but it ended up becoming a full-size building because I ended up cutting the doors wrong by accident. And um, my three deckers, they're obviously all made of wood. Took many hours to build. Uh, the yellow one actually uh, is getting some re re uh, refinishing work on this one. Um, I'm not done with it yet, but I'll eventually finish it. But like I said, all these buildings have been modified somewhere or another. Um, Along with everything, I mean. So, that being said, let's give a uh, quick sound check with the 80 Mac. I still think my 80 Macs are way better than the ones that are coming out by Athlon. So, we got Bell. Air horn. And get some throttle up. Shift her over to the front. The teach lights are perfect on this engine. I mean, they came out awesome. Gotta say, we're going 80 max, but this one's gonna go into the weathering station, so. Um, 
I can't, I can't own any engines that are clean. It's just, I can't do it. I've never seen a clean train in my life and probably never will. So, um, just don't be afraid to pick up, you know, some paints, some powders, acrylics, enamels, whatever you choose, oils, and do some weathering. Bring that real life spirit, you know, real life to your railroad. And um, like I said, I, I do all my own and I'm, I can't be any more pleased. Like I did the roof on this box car, it looks fantastic. And I mean, I didn't even do much to this car. I just faded out the paint. Just faded out, gave it some different colors on the roof and some pen, some pen graffiti and some regular decal graffiti and a little bit of rust here and there and presto. And like this Norfolk Southern, I dusted the bottom and just lightly did the roof. And the roof was just a wash. I did, I just put a little bit of rust and washed the rest of it. Just washed it around, swish, swish. This ballast car, I wanted it to look like it's been, you know, in years of service, which I think we achieved that. Um, I cut up that. That was a, Those were atherin loads. I cut them up to, and cut them up and shaped them into fit my exact rails. Because like I said, we, uh, we don't like doing much with atherin here. But, um, and then like over here to Gold West, I did the roof of this one. I still got to dull out the roof. It's still a little too shiny. I got to finish dulling it, but I mean, the, the details came out great. And, uh, yeah, that's it. So what I'm trying to say is don't be afraid to, don't be afraid to jump off the edge and try something new with your train, whether it's weathering, adding sound, I mean, Sky's the limit, especially in HO scale. That's why I chose HO over any other scale. It's just, you could go forever with it. And, uh, oh yeah, and this is another cool new uh, addition to the layout. We have Proto Throttle here. So, um, we love running our trains, so can't have it without the Proto Throttle. And quick look at the kids. The kids Polar Express, we're still working on that too. So that's a big um, line L set. So we got trains everywhere here. And I apologize for no backdrop yet. It's in the works. Snow's disappearing, thank God. And uh, that's it. Next video, hopefully we'll uh, have some more done and better updates. Thanks and have a good day.